there's there's a lot of things that you uh, go through as far as um, trying to re-entry back into uh, being a productive citizen. Um, in this game, unfortunately, it's it's pretty much who you know, you know, to be able to get a job, um, a, a great job. I wouldn't even apply for certain jobs because I felt that I was gonna be turned away. So I just told myself in my head that, you know, they're gonna deny you, don't even apply. So I pretty much did that for a few years, but after that, I, you know, I got out my own way and just, you know, start applying for jobs that pretty much would tell you no, but I still went out and did it anyway. Um, I, I applied for a couple jobs that I felt that I was, um, good for and um of course doing the interview and everything um i put down that i had felonies where you know he doesn't really say anything about the felony but there's a big habit to it, and um but i know when i leave out of the room i know i'm not going to hear from this person ever again you know it's unfortunately we can read the room more than they think we can read the room we you know so We want to get out there and we want to work. So it's very vital that we um, put these ex-offenders um, in the right place to get help, especially when they want it. When I first talked to Joanna, um, of course I was real hesitant because I feel as though my life didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like the issue that I was going through didn't matter. And um, talking with her, and she, you know, let me know that it did matter. Being an ex-offender, living in Washington, D.C., and constantly being reconvicted and reconvicted and reconvicted over and over for something that I did over decades ago, you know? And um, she let me know that that's not okay. It's not okay. And let us see what we can do about this. We might can't change the world, but we're gonna start right here and change this. Don't don't stop believing in yourself and don't stop believing in the good of others. That to keep trying and to know that a better day is coming and a better day is here. In February, 2023, Haynes and Boone, the Washington Lawyers Committee and First Transit Incorporated, a global leader in transportation services, announced that First Transit will further develop their equal opportunity hiring process. The enhanced process will increase its diversity, equity, and inclusion objectives and create economic opportunity in the communities in which First Transit operates. Like many major employers, First Transit conducts background checks to screen whether prospective employees have criminal records as a part of its hiring process. Following discussions with Haynes and Boone, the committee, and an expert consultant, First Transit has thoughtfully renewed and refreshed its background check policies. The new policy relies on rigorous recidivism research to continue to ensure that qualified persons have the opportunity to work and succeed. They will not be unnecessarily excluded from employment due to prior criminal records that data supports have no impact on their ability to safely do their job. Haynes and Boone, the committee, and First Transit recognize that overly broad policies can result in the exclusion of qualified applicants of color. Today, we recognize Haynes and Boone for their work to expand job opportunities and provide second chances. Three Virginia Tech students were sued by their employer, Bookholders, after they stood up against being paid below the minimum wage and were threatened by the company's CEO. In January 2023, the Maryland District Court found that bookholders' actions ran afoul of Maryland law, in part because the company had sued the students in bad faith and attempted to inhibit the students' complaints to the government. Thank you to Public Justice and Murphy Anderson for defending the rights of these students, a truly outstanding achievement. For several years, BDO has provided crucial pro bono services addressing racial discrimination against workers and people of color. 
Their expert assistance was invaluable in multiple cases on behalf of black police officers in Maryland, facing racial discrimination in the workplace. BDO's analysis of future earnings, including promotions, overtime, pensions, Social Security, and more, was critical to a $1.2 million settlement. They also played a role in our case fighting for workers that had been terminated without notice and who later received a court award of $700,000 in unpaid wages, overtime, and other damages. Today, we recognize BDO for their important work.